Hey everyone, when we're building a database, not a, well, a database app, any application, um, we will typically throw you know, buttons on a form, pop up menus, main menus, you know, status bars, toolbars, etc. And what we may do then is to um, set up the event handlers for you know, each of those components, a button with an on click, you know, and so on. And that's all well and good. And then you know you're asked to well, I would like that copy menu item to have a to have an image. And now you have to go through all those places where you would have or, uh, that that sort of control, whether you add made a pop up menu item or a um, tool button or the main menu, and you know make sure they're all consistent again. In so far, not just having an image, but the same image all through. And what if you were to forget, you know, to set up one of those correctly? Well, this is where an action list can come in hand, can come, can be handy for you. So that's what we're going to be looking at today, because an action list allows you to have a single location where you can, let's say, define or control the look and feel of things within your application like a caption, a hint, an image, whether it's enabled, disabled, visible, and so on. So that's what makes, you know, um, an actions within action lists quite powerful. If we were to just look at this Lazarus IDE as an example, you will have a, you know, cut, copy, paste here, and you'll have one at least up here, you know, if not in some other locations that I haven't, you know, looked for. Also, I'm just very before we get into this particular topic, I'm just going to say, yay, I've got my old and style user interface back of the IDE. What I forgot to do with the FP update was to uh, re add the um, docking um, library feature, you know, whatever you want to call it. So and if for no other reason, I could probably get it with the older um, look and feel, but I like having my component list over here where I can easily search for things. So um, it means I don't have to use my memory to work out which you know tab they belong to up here. So we're looking at action lists, and here what we've got is, um, well, we've got an action list on a form. We've got a pop-up menu. We do have an image list as well, and they're all going to be, you know, mainly operating on this button here. And in our example here, all we're going to do, you know, is show the effect of, you know, enabling, disabling a control. Now, in our pop-up menu, then you can see we've got a cut, copy, paste, and you can also see we've added a shortcut key to the copy function and uh, we have an image there. So once you've got, so how do we you know, set up use an action list uh, within our program? Well, the first thing we need to do is look for an action list. And once you've got that, you can then drop that onto your form. Now we've already got one here, so we'll get rid of that one. Um, now when you look at an action list, there isn't that many properties and you'll also find there are not that many events to look at as well. So if you want to let's say add or remove or do something or even you know change properties of an existing action you have to double click on the um, action list and here you will see all of the different um, things that we can do. So basically we can add, subtract, move up and down. You've got categories and within those categories we've got actions. And before I go too far, we'll go into here and if it comes up for me, I'll be happy. Okay, so here we've got, um, we are looking at the action list in the free Pascal org site and it just talks about um, what an action list is, that it can contain it for actions, and actions are, um, when using T actions in the action property of buttons, menus, dialogues, controls, it is possible to centralize 
um, the effects of mouse clicks, menu choices, dialogue selections using a single event handler. So this is where the that this is the power in using an action list. Um, so we're there, and I wonder if we've got something where we can see an example. Let's go to a T action now. And what do we have here? Okay. A T action is a container for a custom or for a specific action related topics like events, description, help topic icon and shortcuts. Using T actions in the action property of buttons, menus, dialogues, it is possible to centralize the effects of mouse. We've already read that part there. Um, okay, so what we'll do here now is if we want to add an action in, so we've got one here, and we will now uh, select that action and we'll go into its properties. Now here you can see that we've got a caption, whether it's checked, enabled, um, help information or help keyword, uh, hints, an image index, a name, a shortcut, you know, whether it's visible or not. So the first thing we might do here is to do, you know, let's say set up a name for it. So um, action ACT and why don't we call this one compile? C-O-M-P-R-P-I-L-E. By the way, um, in these videos, you I'm a, I am a hopeless typist, even though I used to not be. I'm going to call this number one of 101 ways to irritate, let's say, if not another developer, then a customer, then if we have incorrect spelling in our messages or within our, or for me, within the code, um, because you're ever typing it out maybe the wrong way. So, um, what you'll also find here then is the um, caption then it copies the name of the action. So let's just fix that up. And um, now what we can do here is let's give it a hint. Okay, so let's say um, this will compile program. And what might we do here? Let's give it a shortcut key here. And let's go to, we'll just pick something at random. Um, and that is pretty much all there is to adding in a, an, a, an action. Now here you'll also see that, like I said, we've added in a image to the copy um, action. And that's done by, you know, first of all, we can do that by setting the images property of the action list uh, to you know, some action list. And I've got one on the form here as well. Now, what you'll see here is that when we, uh, let's take that away. What I found at least anyway was initially my uh, pop-up menu, let's go back to there. You don't see the image of the copy action. And the reason why that is because until the images property is assigned on the pop-up menu, uh, uh, yeah, until it is assigned, then the image, you know, is not, uh, you know, displayed to the user. Um, but you will see, you can also see in here though that it you can see the shortcut key of the um, action here. So what we're going to do here now, we're just going to add one more thing in and we're going to take across here the compile action. And here you can see that in you know, a compile is now shift F4. It didn't have any um, image there. And if we were to now go into the action list here, go to there, uh, which is our compiling action. We have now got a, in our events now, we've got it on execute, on hint and on update. And here we can, you know, 
put some code in. I'm just closing down this particular form here. And let's do here. And we can now run this. So if we go to our pop-up menu, hit compile, you see, yay, it compiled. Now, that's, you know, as far as, you know, just the setting up of an action and the use of an action. Where we will see that things become more powerful is when we want to, let's say, enable or disable, you know, certain properties or components on our form you know at the right time so what we've got here now is that with my copy action for instance if I were to disable the action then all the components on the form that are associated with that action also become disabled if I enable the action then all the buttons and components on the form you know which are associated with that action become enabled so when we so I've got here um, two buttons you know, enable action and disable action so that if we were to go hang on that's the for the control itself so let's go into here into my copy action hang on why did that go there? Okay, here we go. That's what I wanted to get to. So, with our enable action, we are now enabling the action cop. The in, we are now enabling the action copy. And what that will do is that both my button and my pop-up menu item will be enabled. Whereas, if we were to disable that action by just setting the enable property here to false of that copy action then both the button and the pop-up menu item become disabled so let's see that in action now so right now it is disabled so we can enable the action and you can see it there um, and also in my pop-up menu um, you can see it there as well and now what we're going to be doing is rather than disabling the button or the pop-up menu item here, we are now just disabling the action and both the, uh, the button and the pop-up menu item is now disabled. Now if you were to do this the, without using actions and you wanted to say, you know, mimic what the end that particular action did you would need to have you know both of these lines of code here of course not being commented either one of them um, and in a similar way if you wanted to um, enable the controls you'd have to do here but here you can see that well I forgot to do the other one so what that does do is open up your program to be having let's say a bug of sorts so this is where action lists, you know, become, you know, really helpful in writing our programs. And just probably my two takeaways from this. First of all, in order to get the hints to appear, I did have to set the show hints on the form. I have a toolbar where I also set um, show hints, that way you can see the hints down there. Um, as well uh, and don't forget that you need to assign the images on the pop-up menu um, in order for the images to come across I think they're the only things that make could be tricky for you you know when you're playing with them for the first time next time we are going to be looking at we're going to go through this um, pop-up menu here but looking at something like alignment and um, but today it is A for actions. Um, see what we do next time round. Until next time, happy coding, and I will see you then and bye.